Shakespeare's Hamlet, retold by Stuart A. Atkin. Not a mouse stirring, Act 1, Scene 1, 1, Midnight. Francisco was on guard, duty on top of Elsinore Castle's highest tower. He was standing. Looking up at the stars, it was another cold winter night, and he could hardly wait for Bernardo to come and replace him at midnight. Then he could go to bed in his warm room. He shivered. It was not just the icy wind that made him feel cold. Strange things had been going on in Denmark recently. The strangest thing of all was something that he and the other girls had seen the last two nights up there on the battlements. It had chilled them to the bone. Francisco was praying hard it would not appear again tonight while he was still on watch. A sudden rumbling sound from the tower below made him jump. But then he breathed a sigh of relief. It was only the clock starting to toll twelve. Then a loud shout made him jump again. Who's there? Who could it be? They were the words Francisco shouted himself. No, you answer me, he shouted back. Who's there? Long live the king. Bernardo? Of course. Who did you think it was? I've come to relieve you. Ah, oh, for this relief, much thanks, and it is indeed a relief to see you. It's so cold up here that I've been very frightened all along. Has everything been quiet tonight? Not a mouse stirring. Well, good night, then. Horatio and Mousels are going to join me. If you see them, tell them to hurry up. I will, replied Francisco. Oh, I can hear someone coming now. Two other shadowy figures appeared. Who's there? shouted Francisco. It's me, Marcel's with Horatio. Oh, good. You sound very jumpy tonight, Francisco. Just cold and tired. Well, good night to you all. Good night. Sleep well. Francisco disappeared down the dark stairs. Welcome, Horatio, said Bernardo, going up to him and shaking hands. Please excuse the lack of lights up here, but you know the reason. Yes, Marcel told me. Of course. Horatio thinks we are amazing things, said Marcel. That's why I invited him to join us so that he can see the thing with his own eyes. And being a scholar, Perhaps he can speak to whatever it is. That's right, said Horatio with a laugh. I certainly don't believe in ghosts or anything like that. So I don't think I'll have to speak to anything besides you and the cold night air up here. Well... We'll just have to wait and see, 
we've definitely seen something these last two nights during the midnight watch. They all sat down to wait in the cold. Occasionally, Bernard or Marcellus would get up and walk along the battlements, gazing out into the darkness. Everything was very still. The hours of the night seemed to pass very slowly. Horatio was just thinking he would give up and return to his room for some sleep when Barnardo suddenly nudged his arm. Look, he said in a low voice. Over there, it's come again. They all stared across the tower. A shadowy silver figure was standing there. See, it looks just like the late king, whispered Barnard. Yes, replied Horatio, suddenly feeling terrified. Yes, it does. Speak to it, Horatio. Horatio stared at the figure for a moment. Then he took one step forward, swallowed hard, and said, What? What are you that comes here dressed in the armor of our late king? The figure remained still and silent. Speak to us, said Horatio. Please, speak to us. The figure said nothing, but suddenly turned its back on them. Oh, it's going away, cried Barnado. Stop, shouted Marcellus. Please say something. But the figure slipped away into the darkness. It's gone. The three men were silent for a few moments. The only sound was the flag above them, blowing in the breeze. Then Barnado spoke. Horatio, now do you believe us? Yes, I must not mean I do. I saw it with my own eyes. I have no idea what it was, but it suddenly looked just like the dead king. I fear this means trouble for Denmark. My friends, this is deeply worrying. Many things seem to be strange in Denmark. Right now, Horatio. Everywhere where preparations are being made. Please sit down and explain to us what is going on. They all sat down. Well, said Horatio, I will tell you what I know. You will remember that old king, Fordin Brass of Norway, tried to take over our country, but he was defeated by King Hamlet and killed in battle. As a result, we took back all our land that Fordin Brass had seized for Norway. Well, the king's son, young Fordin Brass, has gathered an army to revenge his father's death. He may attack us at any time. That is why everyone is so busy and you have to keep watch every night up here. And, oh look, the shadowy figure had appeared again. Horatio jumped up and stood before it, feeling bolder this time. If you can speak, 
Please say something. If we can do anything to give you peace, tell us what it is. The figure stared at Horatio for a few moments, and then its lips began to move. But just at that moment, they heard the sound of a cock crowing in the distance. The figure turned away at once and disappeared. I'm sure it was about to speak to us, said Horatio. But see, the first red light of dawn can be seen in the east. Spirits cannot appear in daylight. I think we must tell. Prince Hamlet, what we have seen here. I have a feeling the spirit will speak to him.